Hi everyone. So today I want to show you a little demo on some of the flower paintings I've been doing with acrylics and neo colors. And this was one I just finished recently in the sketchbook. And I'm loving the acrylics underneath, but the neo colors and just blending them in on top. So they're really fun. I just wanted to show you guys how I do them. And these are what the neo colors look like. There's a couple different varieties, but these are the water soluble ones. And uh, I use all the colors and they're a ton of fun. The other thing that I wanted to show you also is, you know, how I get so inspired by all the flowers. Well, this was in yesterday's paper and magnolias are one of my favorite things to draw. So I thought I would do some pretty magnolias today. Also, I have a magnolia tree at my house, so I'm lucky this one's actually on the way out, but you can see how these are all starting to bud. So I have these in my house in a little vase and these little tiny um, seeds are so awesome, these little furry things. So I try to incorporate, you know, anything from nature and if I have real flowers, that's great. But I also get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest and I have Pinterest boards of flowers and things that I like to draw. So and that's how I get started. And I'm just gonna walk you through a couple different things and some of the video might be sped up while you don't have to be so bored watching every stroke I make. But there's a little bit of pencil mark on here. And what I'm gonna do first is sometimes I draw with pencil to get an idea down and sometimes I don't but I wanted to show you guys how I just do a quick, a quick little sketch of these magnolia petals. And they're definitely um, loose. It's just, you know, trying to just make sure that I've got enough in my, in the composition that it's just not a little weird. So it's just really a magnolia branch I'm doing. And that's really all I do is just do something kind of uh, simple like that and I don't even know if you can see this on the video but it's really loose marks I know I have three flowers that I'm gonna kind of spread in this area so I'll work on the petals and the backgrounds at the usually at the same time I just start going crazy with my brushes and my brushes are all over the place I use lots of different ones so I'm just gonna start putting down some pinks because that is what my magnolia petals will look like today. So I'm using the Nova Color Hot Pink here. Could I add some of the Portrait Tone? That's another color I'm using. Some of those guys over there. And I always have white. I've always got white going on. I use a lot of this titanium uh, high fluid it works great I use it for mixing and all sorts of stuff and sometimes I'll just use regular white as well like the thick so really loosely I'm now just gonna put on my first little layer of petals and this is definitely a more of a loose way of doing these flowers at the end of the day they may not even look like a magnolia tree plant but it's just what is inspiring you to to pick your flower so i was going to do this one today so i'm just going to put uh three of these You might hear my chickens in that background. They, I just let them out, they're a little hungry, but excuse them if you hear them squawking away. So this was, this is sort of gonna fill in my composition and I might do a few little leaves down here. So I'm just going to pop that brush there and grab some green. 
I love these Nova colors. I'm sure if you've seen some of my videos, you know that. Betty Krause turned me on to these and I haven't looked back and I use the goldens. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm adding a little gold ink to this. Um, not gold ink, but golden ink, if I can open that up. So I'm just gonna put a couple little leaves where I'm gonna have a leaf or two. Magnolia branches don't have a ton of leaves when the when the blooms come out, but then they'll, st they'll start to happen. And I like having a little green in there. And remember it's art, so it can be anything you really want it to be. <laughs> So here is just a little placeholder. Maybe I'll work on that branch too because the branch is really pretty. So I've got that. So you can see this is pretty rough. I'm just laying it all in. And then I'm gonna work on the background. Go with some blue. I ended up getting a big tub of this one just because I love blue so much. I knew I'll use it all. So I'm going to mix in creating the background is really fun too because you can, well that's a little too green. So I am going to get a new brush and add some blue and just leave this the way that is. It's all good. I go through a lot of brushes, pop them in the water and just grab another brush. Alrighty. So a lot of times too, when I'm doing the backgrounds, I really uh, need obviously my pink flowers to dry. So I'm gonna get close to the edge and not worry about it too much. some more white. So this is how I've been painting in my sketchbook for these flower challenges that I've been doing, just really loose and not really even thinking. I'm not even worried or thinking about anything. I'm just getting that first layer down, adding some more white. And I really like bringing in a lot of color. So you'll see me start to build up the color. So I might, go right let's see i love these little um brushes that have a little angle to them i want there to be some darks and lights My strokes that I'm using are very loose, very all over the place, actually. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry this. And if you want to, if you guys are doing this at home and you want to come back to it later, that's fine. But I'm just going to take a hair dryer and dry it. And then I'm going to start adding more depth to it, adding more darks and lights. And I'll probably speed that up a tiny bit. And then we'll we'll see where we are in, in just a minute or two, just as uh, 
I'm just gonna start doing this kind of stuff and just adding more. So right now I am building up this background. Lots of different shades of the blues and the greens and the whites and just building it up. And as I'm doing that, I'm really thinking about the petals and trying to get in there with some paints and just trying to build up this background because once that's done or once most of the background's done, I'll be able to really concentrate on the petals because I want them to be in the foreground. So you probably tell I redid my branch because I don't know what I was doing before. But anyway, so that's sort of like a little bit of an outline of my branch. I'll probably add the leaves back in and I'm just giving this background some interest by doing different shades of this this blue and then we will go over that again with the neo colors and really bring some more colors out. So that's a little bit of that technique. And I'm going to dry this again. 
I could sit here all day probably and just do these brush strokes. They're so much fun. You just sort of don't even care and you just let go. <laughs> so obviously I don't paint the inside of my house because it would be a mess. My husband's always asking me, hey, why don't you start painting some of the walls and some of the rooms in the house? I'm like, oh, that would be so boring for me. No, well, thank you. No, thanks. Okay, so I'm going to dry this and then start working on the petals. Okay, so now I wanna kind of start to really get the detail of the individual petals going. So I would probably use some more white and maybe this little skin tone just to start to, to, start to sort of think about my petals because that's what makes the magnolia tree flower so beautiful I think so I'm just sort of taking a smaller brush and trying to really pull apart some of these shapes instead of just a big pink blotch still pretty loose but not as loose as I was before When you're painting and you are taking your, uh, let's see, you're taking your petal and you're going over part of that background and it's blue underneath, you might have a little see-through, some transparency. Just go over that a few more times with some paint. It will eventually be thick enough that you won't be able to see it. And sometimes it can bring some interest to your piece anyway. Magnolia trees have the most, they're just so pretty. I just love watching them grow, but also their petals are just really fun to draw. They're, you know, any of the blossom trees I think are really, they're really unique and fun to draw. So I, I do that a lot in the spring. And at this point, I'm not really worried about blending them or doing too much, but just getting the main shape of the petals down. So I know what I'm working with. That one looks pretty good. Now this paper I'm using, I'm not loving it, loving it too much, but you know, this is just a, a demo, but the paper, you can use anything. I try not to use canvases too much on these quick studies. One, um, I think I like the Neo colors better on paper than canvas, and I'll show you that in a little bit, but also it's a little smoother of a surface. So I use watercolor paper and I use hot press. The paper I'm using today is part of a student grade. So sometimes when you are just doing some rough things and you are experimenting or just playing around, student grade materials are awesome. Student grade paints, student grade paper, you don't have to spend a ton of money and it gets the job done. So that's what I'm using today. And if I was going to do this, you know, for a piece I wanted to sell or for a client commission or something, I would definitely use Fabriano hot press, 140 pound paper. It's nice and thick and it can take any of the paints on it. 
and I'll put that I'll 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 put that in my um the notes too so you have that info. So this is just a little quick outline, not outline, but sort of filling in of my petals. That's a little funky. I'm not too sure if that's going to stick around like that. And so what I'll do next is I'm going to dry this again, just so I'm not blending. I want to start getting these colors to pop a little bit. So I'm going to dry this and then I'm going to start adding some more pinks and maybe a little touch of orange and some whites continuing to make these petals unique and pop out. So I'm going to speed that up too. So you don't have to watch me do every brush, but it's stroke, but um, it's just to show you how I'm sort of building up the petals the way I did this background.
Okay, so as I have been building up these petals with some whites and some pinks, I added a tiny touch of orange, more of a fleshy, peachy color. And now I'm gonna start actually going back into the background a little bit and maybe incorporate a couple little leaves, maybe one here, a couple here. And then after that's done and dry, I should be able to start adding the neo colors and show you guys that. So I'm gonna do that and speed that part up as well.
work on the neocrayons next. I'm gonna go dry this and come back and show you guys how I work with the neon cray neo crayons. But one thing is too, you can always paint back over your next layer after you do your crayon work. You can always paint back over. So I'm gonna kind of see what's happening. I'm not loving this sort of empty space right here, so that's why I made this leaf a little bit bigger. I added a little bit of green back here into my background so it's not the same color. So when you work on your background, try to have some shading going on or different colors in there. There's a slight bit of pink in here in the corner and that way it has some interest, not just the petals, but you have some interest in the background too. So I will be right back. I'm gonna go dry this and then we'll start working with the crayons. Okay, this is where the fun begins. <laughs> this is how I had. This back here was the same thing where I sort of looked a little on the flat side. And when I started doing these flowers, I kept thinking, oh, they're a little bit flat. Like this one, one of my first ones, there wasn't any neon color on there. So I think it just adds a whole lot of fun richness to it. And so these are the crayons that I'm using. And I think they're called crayons. I've been calling them crayons forever, but I guess they are wax pastels. And I'm just gonna start grabbing some and probably work on some of the blue back here to really start to bring uh, some of these flowers to pop a little bit more. So these are the colors I have. And I'm just gonna go right in. So I am really pushing down on them. The thing that's so great about these is that if you wanted to, well actually I'll show you, you can just add water to them and then they become paint. Now there is another set that I don't believe does that. So you have to make sure you get the water soluble ones and it will say that on there. But I'm just gonna show you, not that I'm, I'm gonna do a lot of that with this technique, but I've got a wet brush and you can go in and you can just paint away. Let's see if you can see that. So you can do that. You can also, if you're working on some fine details, sometimes I just will paint on top of, this is a crummy, crummy paintbrush, but I'll paint on top of that. And then you can go to town that way. So I am just adding this darker blue, really still loose, like the way I held my brushes. I don't wanna to get too tight or too, um, too liney, I, that's not the right word, but you know what I'm talking about. Just kind of loose, you can roll it with your hands. So I'm going back in for some more dark areas. You can almost blend them together too, they are amazing. And then when you have some dark paint underneath, when you go with a lighter, oh, look how beautiful that looks. You can um, make some really fun lines. I've been trying to also do colored pencils on top and that has not been working out so much. I'm gonna have to investigate. So if you know any other fun tools, let me know. This reminds me of doodling when I was a kid. Just being free like you were when you were a kid drawing. So 
So I'm grabbing a green and bringing these petals to life a little bit, really pushing down. That way I get some rich color. If I did it loose and light, it doesn't even come off. And that's a cool way of doing it too, but I, for this purpose, I'm really pushing down and blending them. There's a nice black in here, but I'm gonna get this uh, branch. I don't want it to be so dark, so I am gonna get this brown. So instead of using the brown paint to make this work, I'm just going right over with this brown. I love all these blues together. I'm hoping that they'll come out with even more colors, you know, more blues and more pinks. Maybe they have it. I should go investigate. So I'm gonna continue to use these crayons in this background and then we'll hit the uh, petals towards the end so I'm going to speed that up a little bit but I'm going to just be working around here. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna do that same effect on the petals. So you can see all of these little lines are giving this background this new rich sort of look and feel. And I'll bring some white in there as well. 
and just outline a little bit of these petals to make them pop a little bit in the green adding some neutral colors in there is also nice so I will do the same thing you can kind of see the difference right now the petals don't have anything to this background so I'm gonna do that same thing to the petals and on the petals I'll be using primarily the white the orange and the pinks and the reds I'll do the same thing where I will just go to town, have fun, and speed it up a tiny bit. have added a whole lot of the neo colors to the petals I might add a touch more pink on top of this but and some white with paint but I wanted to show you you know even though there really isn't this orange and yellow necessarily in the magnolia petals it just adds a little bit extra a little bit of a warmth color to it and some dimension so again you know this is art so you can make your magnolia or your flower any anything you want 
and that is totally fine. So I always like to add a little bit more colors to my work than I see uh, with a naked eye. Just, I like to add stuff. So I'm going to just do a tiny touch up with some of this pink and white just to go on top with a smaller brush and add another little element. So you can paint right on top of your crayons. So I'm just adding a little bit of this light pink. You know, the blending of both the crayons and the paint, it's a little like the effect of oils, which is really interesting. Bit of a softness to there. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little demo. And if you have any questions, please feel free to just send me a message and I will be I have more of these videos online. You can find them on my YouTube. You can find them Instagram, but I will be publishing this one in my YouTube channel. So go ahead and subscribe if you want. I also have a newsletter that I do about once a week. But anyway, lots of places where you can find me and I really appreciate you watching and I hope it inspires you to go create a little bit of art maybe later on today. All right, have a great day. Bye.